kuzo kila siku jana leo na kesho since we began the DCIKZ at 40 countdowns, the DCIKZ at 40 stories has quickly become one of my favorite segments. Today, we get to hear a story of a woman who got born again in a midweek service just coming from a drinking spree. She sat through the entirety of the service quite intoxicated and encountered God at the end of the service. I bring to you the story of Elizabeth Wahinya, but most of you know her as Shikoa Jesus. Enjoy. My name is Elizabeth Wahinya Wanjiko. So a lot of people know me as Shiko, Shiko Wa Jesus. Um, over and above that, I am saved and I love the Lord. Um, I got saved in 2011, September the 7th, on a Wednesday. And um, it was a midweek service. So the reason I had come for a midweek service was because um, maybe I should give you a background of why I had been in Deliverance Church all this time. So I was brought up in Deliverance Church, Isili mainly, where my mom got saved and uh, attached us to Sunday school and the youth ministry and all that. But truth be told, for me getting saved was just a narrative. So you would go to Sunday school, sing your songs and go home. And uh, for people coming to tell me, praise the Lord, answer was amen automatically, because that's a greeting I knew from a very young age. So I grew up like that. I went to high school, and of course high school you're asked, um, where do you belong? Of course I was a Pentecostal, because I'd gone to Deliverance Church all my life. So I joined the Christian Union because I had been brought up in church and went along with it and flowed with it. But the truth of the matter is there was never Jesus in my life. I had never opened my life up to Christ at any one point. So it was, we sing along and if you're asked whether you're saved, you say yes. And that's the risk of um, just sailing along in church without having an identity. So come, when, come after high school, um, things went way uh, haywire. And at some point I left home for about six years. Um, I went uh, out of the country. So this means I was now not in touch with the church that was helping, helping to, you know, to keep me and to keep me like straight in terms of life and all that. So when I went out of Kenya, I really indulged in the rough life or the first, the, the first life you'd call, yeah? So it was all about drinking and partying, you know, Monday to Sunday after school. I, used to, I was going to school. So after school, you party, you wake up, you go back to another party, bottle after bottle. And that's the life I'd adapted for like six or seven years. And then of course, that was not going to give you any success. So eventually, what did I do? I came back home to my mother. And when I came back home to my mother, she told me now, uh, of course, welcome back home, but this is a time for you to change. And then again, now I adapted to church because now with my day, you can't continue partying. Although I still used to party, Albeit, uh, but I still used to go a lot, you know, like Nairobi, you go drink, come home, sleep, and all that. And then in the midst of this parting, um, I, I left home and I came to live in Zimmerman. So this was like in about in 2004. And the reason why I came to Zimmerman was because I had a little baby <clears throat> and I was working for a company that's around Kahawa West. So I needed to be in Zimmerman for efficiency so that I could get to the office early. So by virtue of being in Zimmerman, so the question from my mother would be, have you gone to church? When is the last time you went to church? And it would be so hard to answer this question because she would ask and I would say, I haven't been there for three months. I haven't been there for two months. And she would be so upset. So I would make effort to come here to this particular church every once in two months, every once in three months, sit at the back and see Bishop and the people my mother knows. And then I would go tell her, yeah, I went. We went to church and we saw, we saw, we did. And, and then the story would close. So this particular Wednesday, I was coming from drinking actually I was coming from a drinking spree and it was in the evening and I was just passing by the church just outside the gate and I had some music and of course the conversation in my head was um, you haven't been to church for like two three months so when your mother asks you if you have been to church you won't have an answer then I was like ah, sinigetui midweek <laughs> let me just go uh, and in any case I had a small baby at home so I was giving the baby time to feed so I was like by the time he the baby will have eaten, and then I'll have an answer for Mother Sunday, and the baby will have eaten. So that's how I got into, into the midweek service. Um, when I got in, I had a very heavy conviction 
Like today is your day. Remember I was high. Today is your day. You have to get saved. And I was like, Mimi ni meubiri wana watu wengi na sijawai yokoka. Ata hii sita okoka. So the preacher, aka ubiri. By the way, I can't remember what he preached. But uh, he preached and we gave offering. Of course I gave. And uh, the service was over and I was so happy with myself. I had again won the conviction, like Jokoka na service imeisha. Then just at the end of the service, uh, the late Reverend Mwithi said, by the way, do we have a visitor today? And of course I lifted up my hand with confidence. Si service isha isha, baka tusha sema grace. Then she, he, he looked at me and he gave me the microphone. I don't know why he gave me the microphone, but the moment I touched that microphone, I could not talk. I could not say anything, I just started screaming. I just told them, pray for me. Today, I am getting saved. And that's how I got saved. That's how I gave my life to Jesus. The day I got saved on the 7th of September, 2011, I didn't leave church until 10 p.m. Why? Because I was scared of going back outside there. I was scared of going back to, I knew that life was not good. I knew it, I knew it was not fruitful, it was not productive, but I didn't know how to get away from it. But glory be to God, because the Bible says that for those who are in Christ, they are now a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So the new came in the moment I confessed. And from that day to date, I have never touched alcohol again. And I have been saved from 2011 to now. And I intend to be saved until Jesus studies or if, until I leave this earth to meet him. So it's been a journey right from that evening. <clears throat> um, of course, I was taken over by the New Believers class, and, the, and uh, we went through the, the 10 steps and uh, the, the baptism and all that eventually until I got to the Father's vision. One of the things that really affirmed me and really helped me to stay in God, because that was my scare, even before, the many times where I had not gotten saved, I think I used to be scared of what if I, what if I get saved and then I fall, because I had, by the way, what if I get saved uh, just a prayer and it's not true to me, what will happen? So the fellowship and the warmth that came around it, you know, really helped me in my work. And I kept counting one year, two years, three years. And a lot of my friends uh, or people, even relatives, they were counting with me, you know. They, they used to say, the moment I got home and I told them, like, I am born again, some of them laughed me off. Uh, some of them believed in me. Like, of course, my mother, you can imagine how she had prayed for many years. And... Um, the surety that I got and the learnings and the teachings that I got to help overcome the past things and to give me a reason to look up and tomorrow, that is what um, has held me together in one place. One of the key things um, that belonging and being in the fellowship of believers here um, helped me sort out in my journey as a Christian was dealing with wounds that had come up in my life. In that other nasty life, I had created a lot of wounds. I had failed my mother, I had failed my relatives, I had failed myself, yeah. you know? And so I had to go through a process, which I got to the Father's vision. I had to go through a process of learning and healing to be able to bring me back to what God intended me to be. The other thing that the church has really helped me grow is in the area of service. Um, service to God and service to mankind and service to his people. So um, after a while, um, I joined um, the ushering ministry um, and I have been doing um, ushering um, for the church um, for a good couple of years, which I enjoy doing um, because um, ushering is all about, um, I mean, maintaining order in the service and which, which I really find joy in doing, um, in helping the service leaders and the people of God enjoy a calm environment as they lead the service. So it helped me get out of my cocoon of not thinking that I cannot do anything um, into doing many other things, even in the church. The other thing is that I got to get so many friends um, that actually I got more friends than I had before. Yeah, and friends who help you in this journey, in your highs and your lows, they hold you up, they keep you warm, yeah, and all that is beneficial. So we, we thank God. I can say I'm a beneficiary of, of this 40 years. I can say I'm a daughter and I'm a fruit of, by the grace of God, of this ministry for the past 40 years. When I count my blessings, I count DCIKE in it. Wow, what a testimony. 
The DCIKZ stories continue to remind us that we should throw ourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing we do for him is a waste of time or effort as we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. As the DCIKZ turns 40, we are so glad that we get to share this with you. Because here at the DCIKZ, this is my story. This is your story. This is our story. This is the DCIKZ at 40.